Now, so far we have understood this idea of angular displacement, angular velocity, etc. Distinguishing it from linear velocity, what's actually happening in terms of distance over time. And then we can think about revolutions, um, rates, frequency, right? By the way, I mentioned to you before that um, a way of working out the period of motion is to say 2 pi on omega, 2 pi on omega. Now, as you remember with um, all your trig functions, right? Period is the sort of converse of frequency, right? Like how, how frequently this is going around. 2 pi on omega will give you the period. Because frequency is the opposite idea. If you want frequency, all you need is omega on 2 pi, right? Omega on 2 pi, that'll get you back to, um, you know, how many revolutions per second, which I think will be uh, four thirds of a revolution per second in this particular example, okay? So sometimes you'll be asked for this, sometimes you'll be asked for that frequency. And um, you, of course, can just logic it out, just think about what's going on, like, 80 revolutions per minute, I can work that out. Um, or you can just use these formulas if you're happy with those. Okay? But, but, with our current understanding, that's pretty much it. That's all you can ask. Um, this is tricky, but it's not extension two. This is like, this is sort of extension one level of looking at um, uniform circular motion, okay? If you want to know more, if you want to be able to pose more interesting questions and ask more challenging um, uh, solve more challenging problems rather, you're gonna have to really to dig deeper, right? So the question then becomes, what do I wanna know? What's worth knowing about a situation like this? And how do I get to that knowledge? Right? How do I get to that? Now we're in mechanics, right? Mechanics, what distinguished mechanics from extension one motion? What were the new, there were two big ideas that sort of came together, yeah. Yeah, forces, which of course go along with mass, right? If you think about mass and then you think about all these things, you put them together, you get forces, okay? So I'm going to pose the question, here are very simple things I can ask about this, but if I want to know about the forces that are going around, for instance, this is an actual question, why is it that as you went round and round and round, so many of you fell apart? That's an actual question that we can answer, right? Yeah, your hands down. We're going to be able to answer that question, but we can only answer it in terms of forces, okay? So if forces are what I want to know, forces are what I want to know, and the next question is, well, how do I get to that? How do I get to an ex expression for the forces that are going on here? I want you to remember, this is uniform circular motion, okay? So therefore, every position on the circle can be described in terms of your angular displacement, right? Because you're on a circle. What are the coordinates of a point given an angle theta and like a radius r? Okay, this is just our familiar parametric representation of the coordinates of a circle, right? So what I've got there is an expression, oh, wrong color, is an expression for the horizontal displacement and an expression for the vertical displacement, okay? So that's really good. I can use these, I can combine them together to work out what forces are going on here, right? So for instance, like where I'm headed is, you can see, um, I'm not gonna draw it in, actually no, I could, I think we'll manage. If I draw in the, um, linear velocity over here, headed off in that direction, okay? If you look at this, you can see a component of this, think back to like projectile motion, right? think back to projectile motion. A component of this is going in the vertical direction, right? And another component is going in the horizontal direction, yes? Does that make sense? Now maybe you see, maybe you're thinking, wait a second, why are my lines going off in those directions? I'll let you, let you have a think for a moment as to why they have to be headed this way and not that way. You just have a think about it. Okay, I'll resolve the answer for you a bit later if it's not clicking for you, okay? But I just wanna give these guys names. I'm gonna call this a force over here and a force over here, named after the directions they're going in, okay? So in order to get to what these guys are, I need to rip out the part of this tangential velocity that's going to go in this direction and the part that's going to go in that direction. That's how I'm going to have to get this out. And the way I'm going to get to those is using each of these expressions, right? I'm going to think about, just like in projectile motion, I have to do all the x stuff, then I have to do all the y stuff. It ends up being somewhat repetitive, but I have to do it for both so I can combine them at the end, okay? So, let's begin. If I have x equals r cos theta, right? I want to know, how is this changing with respect to time? This is displacement, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this expression once, 
And that's going to get me to, if you differentiate displacement with respect to time, you get to velocity, right? So velocity is what I'm trying to find, okay? Or well, it's what I'm going to find, and then I'll keep going down, eventually I'll get to forces, okay? So here, I'm gonna say, well, that's dx on dt. That's how to differentiate that, right? But I have a teeny problem, teeny problem. This is not an expression, it's not a function of time, right? So I can't differentiate with respect to time, at least not usefully, right? It's a function of theta, so I must differentiate it with respect to theta, right? So if I can only differentiate this with respect to theta, right? But I actually want things in terms of time. I'm going to have to use chain rule here to be able to change the variable this is in terms of, right? What am I going to have to multiply by? D theta on dt. You see why each of the... You yeah, have a bad data. That's okay. Um, I've got the d thetas there. They have to cancel with each other. But the reason I had it in the first place is this is an expression in terms of theta. dt is there because that's what I want this to be in terms of. So you can see that. That's fine. Okay, uh, dx on d theta. You can tell me what that is. In this case, okay, we nailed it this time, yes. hooray, okay, that cos theta turns into a negative sine theta, r oh, is just a constant, d theta on dt, ah, oh, I have a name for this, I call this omega, okay, very good. So this, this is the velocity in horizontal terms, so I'm just going to call that v of x, okay. Like I said, we have to do this for both sides, so let's just quickly uh, go through that process but for the vertical coordinates, so I've got y equals r sine theta. I've got to pull the same trick again. So if I want to differentiate with respect to time, in order to do it with a function in terms of theta, I have to use chain rule, right? So I'm going to go dy on d theta, and again, surprise, surprise, d theta on dt. Okay, guys, derivative with respect to theta. r cos theta, and then again, omega of this, okay? Now, I'm just going to pause for a moment. We're still in uniform circular motion land, right? Uh, as you can imagine, uniform circular motion being so predictable is a lot easier to deal with than, so originally, non-uniform circular motion. What was it that made uniform circular motion uniform? Do you remember? Uh, the uh, angular velocity was constant. Very good. So, omega here, omega, I'm currently considering it just as a number, just as a constant. Later on, we'll have a part of your homework, we'll be to think about, well, now what happens if it's actually changing, if omega is changing? If that's not a number, but a function, that will complicate this considerably, but I'll let you have a look at that later. Right, we differentiated once, that got us to velocity. I'm trying to get to forces, right? So I better differentiate again. What's this going to give me? Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay. So, if I take this guy here, so I'm going to differentiate the horizontal component with respect to time. What am I going to have to do? Think about how I did it before. I have to do the same thing again, don't I? Um, this is still a function of theta like it was before. So I can only differentiate it, v of x, with respect to theta. But if I want it to be actually with respect to time, then I'm going to have to pull in this d theta on dt business again, chain rule. So that's fine, okay? All right, negative r sine theta differentiates to negative r cos theta. Yep. Okay. Um, I've already got, by the way, an omega. I should actually include that inside, right? Because that was also one of the constants. And then I have to multiply by this guy because I differentiated again. So there's there's an omega again. Yep. So I can write this guy as minus or negative r. There are two omegas, so omega squared cos theta. Yeah? Okay, are you happy with that so far? Can you do it again for the vertical component? Yeah. 